Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. Can I help you? All right, Vigilant. We're here at Falkreath. And we're looking Yours for the blessing of kind. And ours is to the light. Let's see how far away it is. All right, there's a camp right here. Galithriel's camp. Let's go. What can I do for Here you, friend? She was right there in front of me. I begged him to give me courage and... Excuse me. What, what is what it? What are you doing here? I'm looking for... a blessing. But who were you talking to? Thorik. It's the name I've given this Nord carving. It helps sometimes, having someone there, even if he isn't real. Oh, this carving. What happened with your mother? I was supposed to slay her. The hunters, they said she was killing their own. I'm with the Vigilant. You can tell me what happened. It was easy for me to track the blood. There was so much of it. And the forest was so angry. I could hear the insects beat their wings like a thousand tiny drums. When I reached the barrow, I saw something. It was bigger than any creature I'd ever seen. What? I managed to wound it, but when it came time for the killing blow, I... I couldn't. Somehow, I knew it was still her. So I ran. When I returned, the hunters stormed off into the woods to finish the job. I don't know what they expected of me. I couldn't hurt her. How could anyone? Hmm. Wonder what sort of creature your mother became. A werewolf? Something worse? What, what are you doing here? What happened with your mother? I was supposed to slay her. The hunters, they said she was killing their own. It was easy for me to track the blood. There was so much of it. What can I the do for you, friend? Was so angry. I could hear the insects beat their wings like a thousand tiny drums. When I reached the barrow, I saw something. It was bigger than any creature I'd ever seen. I managed I'm to wound here. it, but when it came time for the killing blow, I... I couldn't. Somehow, I I'm knew still here. it was still her. So I ran. When I returned, the hunters stormed off into the woods to finish the job. I don't know what they expected of me. I couldn't hurt her. How could anyone? Then why did you agree to it? I had to. She was my responsibility. But I couldn't. The hunters, the gods, they gave me a chance to make things right. And I failed them. Do you think... Do you think she's dead? Well, I don't know what sort of creature she became, but... There's still hope. I suppose... In Stendar's name, let me see what I can find out. Where is this barrow? The roadside ruins. That's where I dropped my bow. If you find it, I'd like it back. But if you forgive me, I pray you don't find anything else. Let's get going. All right, we need to go to the roadside ruin and retrieve the bow. I'm here to help. All right, looks like it's this way. I think we've been here before. Uh-oh. 
something's here. Oh no, you don't. What? Wolves. Stendar, take you. Still want to look <laughs> at Tar and that wolf. Uh oh, what's. Did it just kill someone? The wolf almost looks spectral. Look at this. Was it just me? This. Are you all not seeing these wolves? All right, I can use these pelts. Here it is, her bow. That day we met, I doubted. I wondered whether a world that asked me to kill a child is a world worth saving. Doubt is an insidious disease. All right, Hist. You're quite covered in blood. Let's see if we can't get back to the camp. If I can find out which way it is. for that. Well, there's actually no trace of her, unless you can count all the blood and gore. Then she must have escaped. Maybe the gods haven't abandoned her yet. You mentioned the bow was important to you. When my mother lived in Valenwood, she came across an old tree that made for the perfect home, if not for a single wayward limb. A travelling outsider offered to cut it down, and from the wood he fashioned a bow. Together they would later form a village. It wasn't the best wood, and it isn't much of a bow, but for Mother, it was a piece of home. For me, this bow is a piece of her. I, I thank you for returning it. 
If there's anything you need, I will do my best to help. Hmm. Huh. I was hoping you would say that. I need your assistance in a trial of the gods. Then this truly must be fate for you to bring me this bow. I will do as you ask. I require Kinnereth's blessing. All right. As a city elf, this feels a bit odd. But I give you her blessing. And mine. Okay, so to follow the divine Kinnereth. Kinnereth is the goddess of the winds and sky, patron of travelers and the first spirit of creation. A follower can move faster in combat. The tenants are to explore new locations, strive to raise your stamina, receive the voice of the sky, pray only outdoors, and never openly break the laws of Skyrim. I'll decline, Kinnereth, but I thank you for the opportunity. What can I do for you, friend? My mother's spirit is in this bow. All right, we've done it. We've stopped. What is it? I feel like I need to learn more about my heritage. <laughs> Stop being a city girl. What can I do for you? All right, friend? well, good luck to you, Gathriel, and thank you for your assistance. I feel like I need to learn more about my heritage. Stop being a... All right, I think there is... Yes, but two more things to do. I need to receive the blessing of the warriors of the eight divines. Let's Tico. see if we can find where they are located. It's never a good sign. <laughs> Vigilance, are you here? <laughs> All right. Stendar has taken the bear. Is anyone here? Grant me your blessing. If this cold numbs my fingers any worse, I'll scarcely be able to hold a weapon. This. A sun knight. Huh. Must be one of the anointed of Stendar. Stendar's mercy be upon you. What? For the vigil has none to spare. Varanya! You survived! You survived the destruction of the Hall of Vigilant! It's so good to see you. You speak to a vigilant of Stendar. Yes, I know. With any danger, and we will hunt you down. <laughs> oh, I just don't know what to say. Oh, well, this may not be the time to ask, but I am in need of a warrior of Stendar. I'm sorry, but you must look elsewhere. My presence is needed here. I and can imagine. But Varanya. Vampires. What? To arms, vigilance. Rend them all to dust. I knew what? I heard something. Vampires, let's go. Oh, 
Dendar. Consecrate this ground. Crush you like a bug. Suffering the Daedra cause will not go unpunished. Stendar's mercy be upon you, for the vigil has none to spare. So these were thralls. Where are the vampires? Ah, here, yeah, the master vampire. The journey that Stendar sends you on is swift and bright. I can't get over the fact that Varanya is alive. She escaped the vampire massacre back at the hall. Stendar's mercy be upon you. And you. The vigil has none to spare. Don't I know it. You fought valiantly, adventurer. I am in your debt. Well... It's good to As hear. you have proven yourself to walk in the light, then perhaps I was wrong to deny your request. What exactly is this task you speak of? I am on a pilgrimage to honor the divines and require Stendar's blessing. Yes, it seems the gods shine their gaze upon you, and Stendar could have very well brought you here, so that I may drag your foes into the light. You have my attention, Pilgrim. What is it you ask of me? I simply require Stendar's blessing so that I may prove my faith. Then you will have it, Pilgrim. Walk always in the light. Thank you. None escape the vigil. All come into the light. Need something? <laughs> you speak to a vigilant of Stendar. Cavort with any Daedra, and we will hunt you down. I would like you to cure me. Stendar's light purify you of your ills. Thank you. Bless you, vigilant. Farewell. Hmm. I wish you could come with me. It's so good the to see you again. The suffering that Daedra cause will not go unpunished. Yes. Oh, I miss that. I accused you all of brainwashing me. In the me. end, I saw the child for what but she had become. I appreciate everything girl, that you've done. But a Thank you for rescuing me and no restoring me back to health. The mercy of Stendar does not extend to Daedra worshippers. All right. Let's go. What can I do for it you? It looks friend? like she's set on staying here. All right. So, agree to aid 
Shavashni in her quest for the stance of R.K. All right, well, I suppose we'll have to return to Sh Sky Shadow Crypt to accomplish that. All right, we're back at Sky Shadow Crypt. And what do we have here? Is this Shavashni? So you return. The fire's inside the crypt on it. The whole thing reeks of my mentor. Hmm. The gods guide us on this path. You cannot stand in our way. Faith. More religious garbage. It requires nothing of the sort. Did you know my mentor used to think the same of all the techniques? It is only after I proved his beliefs to be lies that he was forced to alter his perception. Why do you think faith plays no role in the technique? There is no doubt my mentor was inspired by his faith. Without the mythology, the Way of the Nine would not exist. But inspiration is not the same as the gods descending to the earth and handing you power. My mentor once believed that every technique required an unwavering belief in the divine for which it was named. At first I played along, if only to extract knowledge. Yet near the end, it was obvious to even him that I had no interest in fairy tales. You ask me why I think Faith plays no role. I am living proof. I mastered eight techniques without once prostrating myself before an altar. It is only because the ninth escapes me that he clings to the notion that faith is what I lack. And yet... In the end, the technique eludes you. There must be something to it. The absence of one thing does not prove the other. I lack knowledge. I lack a method with which to obtain it and a mentor to teach it. What I need is more time. Another chance to see the stance in battle. What I do not lack is more faith. You mentioned before you were after a pair of swords. Indeed I was. Two legendary swords hidden away in the nameless barrow to the north. Two fangs of unparalleled edges and durability. Masterly crafted and in my hands. Still, I am not accustomed to their varying weights. I will need to train before I can wield them as they were designed. This means my mentor will have time to conduct whatever foolish rituals he has concocted and leave him no excuse when I slay him and his pupil. <laughs> well, I am the pupil and the one who will face you in the end. Of course. I wouldn't have it any other way. I will wait for you at Winter's Peak, where Kynareth sheds not a tear. Be gone, then. Hmm. Huh. I was hoping to go on the quest for I those swords. I whether our world, the gods' absolute righteousness, was true. Perhaps it was but a failure to reconcile with those we labeled as demons. All right. This looks like there are two options here. 
I can agree to aid her in the quest for the stance. Shavash, Make it quick. Tell me about the way of the Nine. You will understand little of what I speak, and much of it is of no practical use, but facile metaphors tossed around by dying man. But I will enjoy watching your brow twitch in confusion as I pass his words on to you. Take, for instance, Tabella, the god of beauty. Interesting. Tell me about Kinnereth's technique. The stands of Kinnereth. Both blades pointed upward toward the sky. Power sacrificed for stealth. Just as we know not from where the rain falls, the blade's vertical position masks its angle and its target. What does the stance of Stendar entail? Standard's mercy, the only technique of the Nine that utilizes a single blade and a single cut. As two warriors pass on the road, the blade is drawn from the scabbard and returned in a single motion. Twenty paces later, a red gash will appear on the victim's neck, no thicker than a cat's hair. Thirty paces later, and the gash will form a crescent, as pearls of blood trickle from the wound. Fifty paces, and the line has run full circle, the blood dribbling onto his collar. What happens beyond fifty paces? The victim reaches for his neck, and upon touching it, his head topples over. So, fifty-one paces, Traveler, from where you stand. That's where you can exhale. Tell me about the stance of Dabella. She stands nude, arms raised, cupping a golden flower, pouring cool water over her supple breasts. But here, beauty is artifice. The stance is seduction. Blade raised in the right hand glints like the midday sun, bewitching your eyes while its partner lies in the grass. Intriguing. Tell me about the technique derived from Akatosh. Akatosh, the dragon god of time. And what's battle but timing? No different than a bard's tune. Dance to the beat of a throbbing heart. The stance of Akatosh is an offensive position, a series of flurries that disrupt one's timing and rhythm. It's designed to stagger an opponent and end the fight quickly, but should you fail, you will fall to your own exhaustion. What about the stance of Zenithar? Zenithar. Oh. Right Excuse foot me. facing east, left foot facing north, swords crossed in a defensive position. When braced together, two blades are as resolute as any shields, and the winds of Zenithar with a shift for those who labor and endure. I would like to know about the Giuliano stance. Julianos teaches that from one thing. No ten thousand. Study closely what is distant and look from a distance at what is close. Bah! Garbled poetry and peasant wisdom. Unnecessary layers of depth that belies what is the simplest of all truths. It is easier to kill a one-armed foe than one with two arms and a sword. The stance of Julianos is 
designed to disarm. Quite literally, in fact. The tip of the blades nearly scraped the ground, sweeping upward to catch the crook of the elbow where the joints meet and the flesh is exposed. Interesting. Tell me about the stance of Mara. The embrace of Mara. Both blades held out horizontally to create the illusion of an opening. Love too can be a source of bait. In this case, the love of blood. And Mara's blades close faster and hold tighter than any trap. I'm curious, then, about the stance of Talos. Talos. Mortal man ascended to the divines. The front foot faced the opponent, just as Talos faced the armies of men. The back foot faces the rear to the invisible plane of the eight. Two swords pointed north and south, forwards and backwards in an open stance. If you only see the modern man, you'll neglect the hidden divine. Hmm. Thank you. You've enlightened me considerably. So that's enough about sword style. And I grow weary of your questions. <laughs> Speak quickly, or not at all. Tell me about the way of the Nine. You will understand, but I will enjoy watching your brow twitch in confusion as I pass his words on to you. Take, for instance, Tabella, the god of beauty. What's so special about this technique? Fool, the stance of Arke is the very heart of the do sword technique. Life and death, ice and fire, the nature of all things are born of two. This duality applies to both life and battle. When a mortal kills a foe, in that instant, Arke grants death to one and life to the other. Or so the priestly ones will tell you. Yet the true duality lies not in the dirt and stars, but in how the blade serves as both sword and shield. Twin moons, one sky. Each blade shifts from offense to defense, a mirror reflection of the other, and the opponent knows not where to strike. Yet as it is not a single stance, but a motion that adapts to its opponent, it has proved as impenetrable in theory as it is in practice. Hmm. Be gone, then. Seems like I'm not going to be able to help you with this. Yours is to pass, and ours is to delight. One more time. Out with it, fool. You will understand, but I will enjoy watching your brow twitch in confusion as I pass his words. And I grow weary of your questions. Speak quick. You will understand, but I will enjoy watching your brow twitch in confusion as I pass his words on to you. Take, for instance, Tabella, the god of beauty. All right. I think we're, we only have one it's option been a long time left open to us. Hours outside. Yesterday, I think I burned the scales on my nose. It was a peculiar feeling. I'm going to have to return to Garrett and undergo the trial.